Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today for another Passion Week devotional. Uh, we're going to jump right into where we're at. Today we're going to be in John chapter 17, looking at Jesus' prayer for the believers. So grab your Bibles and let's jump in. John chapter 17, starting in verse 20, says this, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. I love that. I love Jesus' prayer for the believers because he was praying that for us today in 2023. And his prayer is simply this. Jesus' prayer is for unity. Jesus' prayer is for unity. You see, Jesus knew that all the nations would hear the good news, and because of his blood, his blood would purchase all people, all nations, all tribes and tongues, according to Revelation 5. And so he knew that this world, this diversity, needed one common denominator, and that is Jesus Christ himself. I've said it before, but unity is simply diversity and cooperation. And Jesus' prayer for unity isn't that the believers would just be unified to have one common thought and theme, but it's so that they would reflect the Godhead. Because Jesus constantly said in verse 21 that, I pray that they would all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I in you. And may they be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. Then he goes on to verse 23. It says, I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. I love this because our unity as a church, as a body of Christ, should be attractive to the world. One commentator put it like this. Jesus essentially gave the world permission to judge the validity of his ministry based on the unity of his people. You see, unity among God's people helps the world to believe that the Father sent his Son. In today's world, we all know that the church is uh, basically known for what we stand against. And it's true, we should adamantly be against things. But what if today in our world, we allowed our body, we allowed the church of Christ to be a voice of truth? But not just a voice of truth, but truth in love. Because truth without love is simply a loud noise. But truth with love is a beautiful sound. So when there's unity in the body of Christ, there's a beautiful reflection of Jesus that is shown. And that showing of Jesus is peace because Christ is the picture of peace. So my challenge for us today is what can we do to reflect the love of Christ and show unity to this world. What can we do? I want to close by reading another familiar passage out of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 uh, verse 2 says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with one another, making, uh, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourself together with peace. For there is one body, one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. So guys, let's be unified today. Let's be unified as we continue to celebrate Passion Week and what the Lord has done as we go on this journey and see what God can do through our unity. Even though we're a diverse group of people, let's do this by being unified in the Spirit of God. Thanks for joining me today for today's Passion Week devotional. Have a great day.